Okay, welcome back to another edition of 5 Minutes on K-12 Online Learning with, and today our with is Dr. Michael Canuel with the LEARN program in Quebec, Canada. So Michael, could you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? Good morning, Michael. Uh, yes, I'd be pleased to. Uh, I'm the CEO of LEARN, a nonprofit educational organization in Quebec, and we've been working in the online environment since 1999. We have a virtual campus. We offer a full range of uh, services. We have online tutorials. We've been doing that for a number of years. And I'm also the uh, co-founder and former chairman of the Canadian e-learning network. And I guess lastly, I, I did my doctoral work in training uh, uh, teachers who are classroom teachers on how to become uh, effective uh, uh, online teachers. So I have a little background, a little experience in the field. Well, I guess on that last point in particular, um, we've got a lot of teachers right now that don't have a lot of experience with online learning. Uh, some of them have never taken an online course and now in a really short period of time we're asking them to use online tools and think about online pedagogy to do this remote teaching. Um, what advice would you have for them based on your experience uh, in terms of how do they survive the, the next few weeks? Well, I think the first thing, obviously, is you have to just really become comfortable with the technology. The, the technology ultimately has to become transparent. Uh, as you work in this particular environment, um, done effectively, people forget very quickly that they're in an online environment, that they're interacting um, through different platforms and so on and so forth. So the idea is just really take the time to become comfortable with uh, the tools. And, and uh, the other part of it, uh, so important, is... Uh, find other teachers to practice with. Practice being the teacher, practice being the student. Um, we put together a whole program with thousands of teachers in Thailand, and we're doing this here in Canada as well, where we have the teachers practice with one another as uh, students and teachers um, uh, themselves. And uh, especially when they take on the teacher or the student role, they really get a feel for what it's like to be at the other end of it. So uh, for me, it's really important that teachers take the time, um, become familiar with the technology, and then after that, start to practice um, um, with one another in, in that particular environment. In, in addition to that, I would, again, consider, ask them to consider what is good pedagogy. Um, try to make sure that you actively engage them in, in the whole process. Uh, um, even though uh, you're in an online environment, that's not a, a reason to become a talking head or um, a one-way uh, delivery uh, uh, system. Really uh, look to engage them. Um, if you can, once you're familiar with platforms and depending on the limitations of your platform, if you have breakout rooms, have them work in groups, have them work uh, uh, collaboratively in a variety of things. And as I said, this is where, before you start doing this with your students, practice with some other teachers. It really doesn't take a lot of time. We do our, our training typically, typically in two, three days, and the teachers love it because they get a sense for, uh, of what it's all like and they understand, hey, I can work with breakout rooms. But make it so that it's active, collaborative work, learning, as opposed to sitting there and uh, becoming the talking head. There's nothing worse than a, uh, a talking head. Uh, and I guess, you know, we, we know that that talking head, the, the kids become passive, and then, then it becomes like watching television. They develop those alpha brain waves, puts them to sleep. So um, get them engaged. Um, don't talk too much, as I'm doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> um. Now, this one may be a, a little off the beat because I know in Quebec, they, you don't have any full-time programs, so all the students that you're working with are in a school somewhere, so they've got the, the trappings of support that we would have in a school environment. But at the same time, teachers are adjusting to this. We also have parents now that uh, you know have their children at home 24 hours a day, and somehow, at least in the next couple of weeks, they're going to have to figure out, you know, how do I help support the teachers that are trying to deliver this remote instruction. So um, do you have any advice that you'd give to parents that are struggling with this as well? Well, I, I'd put that into two levels. I think the first uh, level is really stop worrying about ha having them keep up with the curriculum, keeping up to pace with everything. More importantly, take the time to work with them on a, a whole variety of different things. It could be creative work, working on empathy. Um, have some fun with them. Um, you don't have to feel that, oh, my God, they're going to fall behind in math. They're going to fall behind in, in something or other. Obviously, you want them to keep doing some of these uh, things, but don't try to replace the teacher. That's the first thing. You're not teachers. 
and well, unless maybe you happen to be, but, uh, but if you're, you're not teachers, and typically the worst thing to do is to try to uh, emulate what you think teachers should be doing, and that that means you're know, sitting around the table and pulling out the textbooks and workbooks and having them do the skills and drills. There's very little value in doing that kind of thing. What's more important is really, first of all, create an environment where um, they're ready to do something that could be creative and inspiring. If you're really still not convinced, that's where I go into the second level, that you want to get them doing the, the academic things. Before you start, make sure they've blown off some steam. Um, get them to run around, do some exercise. Um, don't exhaust them, obviously, but keep them just so that they've blown off that nervous energy. And then once they've, they've done that, bring them back, get them into a, a mindfulness uh, situation where a little bit of slow, deep breathing. And by the way, parents should always be doing this with them. Don't tell them to do it. Do it with them. Kids love to see this happening. It creates that certain rapport and, and, and it models uh, more than anything else. So once you've got, you've created that environment, look for activities uh, that, that really, again, highlight the, the, act, the active component. Get them engaged in something, not just about being passive. Watch this, look at this. Um, they have to be engaged in the whole process. So that really is critical to it, to it all. Um, and have fun through the whole process. Um, that does not mean, you know, learning should be enjoyable. It should be fun. It doesn't have to be stern and difficult. And you have to be the mean disciplinarian. If you, if you fa make, make a mistake along the way, laugh and have fun. Start over again. Realize that uh, learning is part of making mistakes. It's a, it's, a, it's a fun process. Make whatever you're doing real for them. If you want to teach math, chemistry, physics, try cooking. You know, and, and look at cooking as, a, as an example of where, why do you have so many ingredients? Why 212 degrees Fahrenheit, 100 degrees Celsius? Why uh, do, do, you, do you do all these things? Cooking is a great way to learn physics, to learn mathematics, to learn. And then if you're following instructions, you're reading. So there's there's a whole bunch of different things. And, and if you have a number of kids at home, they can be doing it together. Um, so it's it's phenomenal. The danger for a lot of parents is that there are so many resources out there and many of them are properly curated. And so you, you've got to sort through different things. If you're going through that and you're living through that particular situation, as I said, look for those things that are be, will be meaningful and relevant to your child in the real world context. All right. Thank you very much, Michael. So this has been another edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning. And today we've been with Dr. Michael Canyo. Thank you, Michael.